fashion. It's like a rainbow, all the colors. It is an art form. I mean, in a sense, it is an art form because it's not really driven by any specific um, goals as, as outside of the subject, one could say. Even if it is uh, oftentimes applied, but likewise, art can also be applied. Uh, you know, that you could have decorations, uh, interior decorations, stuff like that. But it's not, inherently, it's not driven by that from outside. So in that sense, it's an art form, in, in my view. What would it be? Um, the, 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 like a big star, I don't know. <laughs> a source of light. Well, it's not, I mean, I don't want to be, to be another mathematician, but I think it, uh, rather I would rephrase by saying who are the one I find inspiring figures, you know. So, Kurt Gödel, I would say Kurt Gödel, for me Kurt Gödel, very inspiring f figure, even though he is in a, te technically in a subject which is not, which is quite far away from mine, which is mathematical logic. But I find his depth is absolutely ast astounding. It's depth, not only as a mathematician, but as a philosopher and uh, someone uh, who understood, you know, in terms of his understanding of life, but he also understood many subjects within mathematics. Who else? Um, I don't know. I, I, that's probably, I, I'm more in, in awe of physicists, to be honest, in terms of just as a, in, in terms of their influence and, uh, um, inspiration. So, for instance, Niels Bohr, I find it incredibly um, inspiring. Einstein, in some ways, too, as, 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 as thinkers in general, as the way they approached science. And Bohr, Bohr more so than Einstein because of his understanding, his really deep understanding of quantum, etc. But the dedication, passion, and uh, mystery in the sense of like, that is never going to be finished. It's never. It's uh, we are off. We are, there is a sense of mystery and awe and wonder, something that is never going to be captured by words. They all knew that, and that's the beauty of it. It's, so that's it's, uh, all of those those people remind me that that's what it's about. Mm. Well, hate, I'm kind of, you know, as I grow older, I'm realizing how misplaced that notion is. So there is no, there is no such thing. It's an, uh, it's a fabrication. So the less I use the word hate, uh, the better. Uh, but I would, so I would rephrase and I would say uh, things that couldn't be improved in my opinion or something. And so, um, because everything is right, is right in some sense. For, to, for today, the way we are today, we are at a certain level of evolution. And so we do our best. I, I just feel that we do our best. But can we do better? Yes. So for instance, I, would, I find this idea of, uh, I am uh, concerned about the fracturing of mathematics, about over-specialization. I'm concerned that we are not, that we are pushing our students to publish and to, to kind of to, to catch the low level lying fruit because we communicate to them that, that jobs it's, it's important so we don't talk enough about passion we don't talk about emphasize as older as more mature mathematicians it is our job to to convey that that if you don't like what you do then you shouldn't do it and so you have to follow your heart you follow your passion and so on we don't say that enough so <laughs> to me, also, it's connected to the process of fracturing because then everybody becomes. The, the, we transcend this sort of little me who wants to get a job or wants to get a prize. We transcend that when we share, when we connect with each other. So, for instance, if we are in, in embarking on a project such as the you know the presentation theory and quantum groups and, uh, and uh, integrable systems, it's on the way. It is in this conference. You somehow know that you depend on everybody else. You cannot be by yourself because there's so many, so much many facets, and that helps also, I think, for us to do it in a healthy and harmonious way. But sometimes I feel the temptation is to, 
I just, I was just going to write this one paper and I would just focus the fracturing. So this kind of becomes a small group who doesn't talk to anybody or not, nobody understands what they do and stuff like that. So that's the thing where I wouldn't say I hate it because I understand that it, and somehow we get on the wrong path sometimes for no, not through fault of our own, but just so happens. So one, one day it will be better, so I'm sure, but we have to make an effort. So I love this idea of, of unity, but, uh, but also that uh, there is one more aspect about, of this, which I have not talked about, which I think maybe is the most important, which is that math is the same for everybody. So it is uh, a reminder. Why? Why? Why should it be? It's completely crazy. I mean, there is no other area in which it uh, has this universal property, that Pythagoras' theorem is the same and today as it was 2,500 years ago, and it will be the same in 2,500 years. It is the same to here as it is in other, on other continents, etc. And it's not going to be updated or changed. So this is a necessary truth somehow. And we all share, and it cannot be patented, cannot be taken away. Even the judicial, you know, the, the, the courts have ruled that it cannot be patented. So why? What does it tell us? So. It tells us that actually we are, if it goes across the cultures, across languages, across religions, genders, etc. It means that we are all the same in some way. It's a hint. I'm not saying it's oh, okay, so now we all sing kumbaya and be happy. No, of course we have our disagreements too. But it's good to know that there is something which unites. And that's why also I think math education is so important. It's because we have to convey this idea to our kids that there is this knowledge which is ancient, it's eternal, and it's the same for everybody. So therefore, you cannot claim that there is that much of a difference between you and the next person. If you share the same math, for instance, and then other things too. But that's one thing which is obvious. Once you understand what math is about, you see what I mean? So that's what I love about it. And that's kind of an undiscovered. I feel that today it is not undiscovered by most of us. But it's like that with love too. You, you don't, it doesn't come to you on a silver platter. <laughs> but one day, one day it comes and it changes everything. <laughs> on a desert island. What I shouldn't take is an iPhone. <laughs> That's a bad for sure. So if I'm sent to the desert island, it'd probably be to send me a message that they should stop using my my phone and my computer too much, so much, you know? I don't know, actually. It's a good question. A, sw a, 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 a swimsuit? <laughs> Although, if I'm alone on a desert island. <laughs> there are so many. So which one would I... I'm totally blanking out, uh, but um, but you know, for instance, um, for instance, there is this. Um, I like the ones which kind of explain things which are not usually explained. So, for instance, there was this very nice um, book um, by uh, Shafarevich. So, Shafarevich was a Russian mathematician. And he wrote this book about, it's called, What is Algebra, or something. And it was kind of a survey of the subject. And I read it exactly at the time when I was learning. And so I was like, wow. It was so clearly explained, things we, and kind of like behind the scenes. Instead of just like definition, theory, or proof, formal, but kind of the sense, what is this about? Why is doing this way? So this just comes to mind. Um, then there are books which uh, I use all the time, or I use for many years, like Victor Katz, who is one of the participants of this conference. Uh, he wrote a book about infinite dimensional algebras, which, is very, which was very, very influential. So I, I keep a copy, actually he gave me a Russian for, uh, translation at some point. So that's my, my uh, I, uh, I keep it and I, sometimes, I, look, I have to look sometimes because it's a really very careful treatment on the subject. So there's like a whole spectrum. Um, there are things which are really um, great for learning and the things which are really great for kind of a practicing mathematician, yeah.
But there are many. I'm just came, come up with two examples, but there are many others as well. <laughs> you know, this reminds me of this uh, Borges. Um, Borges has a short story which is called Everything and Nothing about Shakespeare. It's, it's, it's very short, it's very nice actually. And so it's about Shakespeare that Shakespeare didn't understand who he was. And so to be able to understand, he wrote all these plays because he wanted to be a king, or he wanted to be a villain, you know, and, and so on. And he wanted to be a lover. Um, so just trying to understand who he was, but he, he failed. And then he thought, okay, well, I'm looking forward to meeting God who will finally explain it to me. And then he did meet God and God said, yes, I understand the question. I am just like you. I didn't know who I was. So I created all these characters. In particular, I created you <laughs> because I was hoping that this way I will know. And that's the end, so <laughs> pretty much sums up everything.